Welcome, everybody, to the 10th edition of Antigua Forum. We're here with Lenore Ely. Welcome. Thank you. Lenore is Senior Fellow of Communities at the Charles Koch Institute and the founding president of the Philanthropic Enterprise. What is your idea? Because we've been here discussing a lot, a lot of stuff in Antigua Forum with a lot of the stations that we have. But more broadly speaking, what is the role of civil society and the community? Thank you, Will. It's a pleasure to be here chatting with you in this beautiful location in Antigua. Um, I, I've been encouraged. This is my first trip to Antigua Forum, although I've participated in several of the um, UFM co-creation forums in the past. So this is a different beast because of the project owners who are here to really develop actionable projects. You know, project on trying to find new strategies for alleviating poverty. We have a project on restorative justice. And so this, these are the kinds of things that exist in that realm we call civil society neither really market nor um, government action, but the work of people associating together to solve problems. So that's how I define civil society, really on, along the lines of Vincent Ostrom's work, which is to say this space that is not really in between those other spaces, but somewhat different because it operates voluntarily, um, but it doesn't have price systems and market mechanisms usually. So we're really just beginning to scratch the surface, I think, as classical liberals to understand the role of social process in the way that we um, create human betterment. This has been a terrible year with COVID and, well, most of governments and has, have used the crisis to sort of expand and we're all pretty much scared that they'll sort of maintain uh, that enlargement generally. But at the same time, I mean, there's been sort of a huge window of opportunity where I can say into creating a debate um, of the role of civil, of civil society in general, and also projects like other ways of understanding education and maybe other effective ways in which, as you were saying, the community can really be more, maybe more, more effective in, in giving answers to some of the problems that we have as, as communities. Would, do you have any personal, maybe favorite examples of, of of the ways in which this sort of window of opportunity can be used or has been used? Well, we've seen a great challenge to civil society in the COVID experience because of the social distancing requirements. And so that, that action of people coming together in person to be together has been compromised in many, many instances by the government imposed lockdowns. Um, and we've seen a great variety of options with different governments imposing lockdowns of different kinds. But uh, I know here in Guatemala, people found ways to, to express discontent with those arrangements because they felt like they could engage in social action. So I know young people were in their cars, you know, not during curfew hours at some point, blowing their horns to say, we, want to, we, we, we need to socialize, we need to be together, and you know, we need longer hours in which we can, we can find ways to do things safely. I think we've seen really bad examples of how civil societies worked in many places, especially in the United States, with the debate over masking, which I treat you know, as something as a courtesy, not necessarily a mandate. It should be a courtesy as we're trying to understand how to deal with a new virus. So I think that um, we see lots of different ways that civil society operates, and that's that way that we form one another through social interactions. Um, sometimes that's friction, where we rub off each other's edges, but it's really about how we develop the social norms and agreements that we're going to operate on. And so we've seen people needing to respond and react in different ways. In our institutions, which have been fairly locked down, I think one of the most exciting opportunities that we've seen has been um, people who are stuck at home with their children trying to figure out how they're going to be educated, looking for alternative ways. And so we've seen small groups creating their pods where they've been social distancing together so their children can have activities together and that's turned into educational opportunities. We've seen new companies emerging to help assist those parents. Um, so that's very entrepreneurial and very exciting in, in the education space. I think that we're seeing a lot of um, new ways people are finding to use technology, but people are beginning to see to combine that liberty and responsibility piece to really take more ownership over some of the things that we've entrusted to you know, larger governmental institutions in many instances. So I think we're gonna see interesting shifts in where people decide they're gonna continue with education. 
Um, the poverty space, um, that's, a, that's been a little bit trickier. We're going to see a lot more people moving into poverty. Um, so we're going to see increasing challenges, I think, in the next you know, 12 to 24 months is the economic impact and the emotional and social mental impact, mental health impacts of this crisis unfold themselves yeah, because of lockdowns and social distancing and isolation people have endured. I think we're going to see new social norms emerge. Uh, I think they're going to be interesting new ways people are going to find to do things together. And uh, we'll see what we've learned from this. But that learning is where, the civil society is where that kind of learning takes place. And how would you say that that works maybe more generally in the sense that if we think that a free society is something worth fighting for and we've had this sort of interesting year in which we've seen that contest um, taking place, what would you say or could you, would you give some tips or guidelines, maybe lessons would be a better word, to, to further um, develop? that sort of change of mindset and maybe people who weren't really that much into the values of a free society have really come to to understand um, but how could we further push that i used to work with a gentleman named richard cornell who wrote a book called reclaiming the american dream and he was trying to, to engage classical liberals in the discussion of how does community really work and what is the work of all those nonprofit organizations and voluntary associations that are out there and how are they contributing to the overall social economy, we might call it. And I think that uh, one of the things that, that Dick, you would say is that community is something that emerges from those interactions that we have together. And so that when we come together to solve meaningful problems, we learn from one another and, and we engage very much like the Antigua Forum co-creation process is that we're coming together to solve very meaningful and important problems and to bring our creativity and to engage in understanding the diversity of not just opinions but background experience, uh, skills that we can all bring into solving very complex and complicated problems. And out of that, that spirit of community and trust emerges. Um, and many people have um, become conditioned to say, oh, there's a problem, government should come solve that problem. Classical liberals have often said, oh, there's a problem, the market will find a solution. And we know neither of those always finds the best solution. And so I think community is often that prototype space where people come together and define the problems and that they, that they consider social, that they need to act on together. So it's where we actually get some, uh, the, the word is uh, shared understanding and shared meaning. And then people take those shared meanings and those shared identification of problems, and then you can go out and sort of figure out, oh, is there a market solution to that? Is there a necessary government policy change uh, that could be effective? Or is this just something that people need to work on together and find solutions in the community? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. When we come together to solve meaningful problems, we learn from one another and, and we engage very much like the Antigua Forum co-creation process is that we're coming together to solve very meaningful and important problems.